We're back with the Phillies leading 7-1, top of the fifth of the Yankees on the Cadillac scoreboard as we welcome in Yankees manager Aaron Boone. Aaron, you've worked through some pitchers, Severino cool. twice today, 30 pitches in that first inning. Seemed like he made some positive progress. What were you seeing from him today? Yeah, uh, obviously a tough first first inning for us. And, you know, I, I think it started with, with walking the leadoff batter on four pitches where he was just a little up with his fastball and then and then kind of got into a competitive at back where Hoskins was able to work him. Uh, you know, the delivery, the stuff is there. Um, I thought his, he had some really good swing and miss, especially with his fastball, was working up in the zone even with his fastball. Um, you know, it, probably not the right pitch to Castellanos there when he had two strikes. He wasn't able to put Castellanos and Cave away uh, in that first inning there with, when he had him, you know, uh, there with two strikes. But thought bounced back and threw the ball really well moving forward from there. And, you know, tough having to sit through that long of a wait. And then, you know, they had to take out um, Nola. So, so it was kind of a long wait to go back out there in that second inning. Um, he was able to pitch well there, and then and then I thought threw the ball again well in the third, got him up from a pitch count standpoint. But, you know, the results haven't been great, but I do feel like he's throwing the ball really well and his stuff is there, and it's just a matter of just that last bit of fine-tuning to where he gets really sharp. Scott King really lifts that one out to center field off Ron Marinaccio. Ortega's got it, one away. Aaron, he was critical of his slider in his last start, and... He threw some good ones today, but he also looked like he maybe was in search mode for that pitch as well. What did you see uh, from him with his slider? Yeah, a little bit just because he was walking some guys and, and, and they had some good takes against him. So, yeah, just it's fine tuning that last bit of, um, you know, command that, you know, I feel like is is on the cusp there with with Seve. Because, again, I do feel like he looks really good. He's not reaching for his stuff. Um, the delivery, I think, is in a good place. It's just a matter of that, again, that last bit of high-level execution that makes him, you know, who he is. And I uh, feel like he's he's getting close to that. Josh Harrison off Marinaccio. Lifts one out to left center. Ortega giving chase. And that ball off the wall as Florial tracks it down. And Harrison will head into second. With a one out Excuse double. me, guys. I got to go get him. Okay. This is twice we've uh, we've had, had to press pause on Aaron Boone. Yeah. I, and when I say interruption, I'm of course he's got to go okay. change the pitcher. He he can always come back and talk to us. But I found it interesting what he said about Severino, Bob. There was a lot of life on the fastball. Boone is watching how the ball is coming out of Severino's hands. I'll be curious to see what Severino says about the slider when Meredith and the rest of the media get the opportunity to talk to him. Pablo Mujica, the left-hander, is coming in. He's right. We did see flashes, but mostly with that fastball and with his aggressive nature. I think that was the positive takeaway from today, but it still felt like he was in search mode for a lot of the afternoon. Yeah, it did, and that's why you have a couple more starts at spring training to get yourself into a position to be able to say, hey, I'm, I'm feeling great about myself. Let's start the season. So we'll get Pablo Mujica, the pitcher coming in for the Yanks. Hello. Aaron, good to have you back. Who'd you call, who'd you say was coming in for the Yanks? Is it, Mo is it not? It's Nick Ramirez. Is it not? Did I catch a Mujica? Oh, Nick Ramirez. Yes. Well, there you go. Yeah. We got Nick Ramirez. Those were his numbers at AAA last year. He actually led the Pacific Coast League in saves, averaged a strikeout, an inning. Aaron, I know you have a lot of conversations during games, but there's so much focus and so much attention around Volpe. Looks like you guys had a conversation in the, in the dugout that we caught during this game. Anything you'd be willing to share with us about that? When did you catch it? <laughs> uh, an, inning, an inning ago, I believe. Oh. Yeah, it was just something we had talked about um, on the bases that I thought he, ex a couple of days ago uh, in a game he wasn't playing, that we were talking through some a situation, and, and I thought he handled the situation really well when it got put in front of him today. And uh, so I was just kind of emphasizing, you know, when there's things there to be had, we take them, and, and he does a good job of that. Was there kind of a pre-plan to have him steal on that first pitch, or is that just a read by Volpe? Um, that is 
<laughs> That's uh, <laughs> that was a good job by him. <laughs> yes. That sounds like it's state secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, with with the pitch clock, in, in all mm -hmm. seriousness, mm -hmm. have you figured out or have you decided how much quicker you're going to have to be in giving signs? Yeah, you know what? I, I, I tend to give them pretty quick anyway, and, you know, between, you know, how Louie and I communicate, um, it's not it won't it won't be an issue and actually if anything I, what i do like about it is it it doesn't allow you to you know be complacent from a time standpoint it makes you be real efficient with what you're doing real clean with your communication forces everyone to kind of be on their toes um so i actually from my standpoint and my base coaches i i like it, it but it was the first day it was it got your attention no question about it We see IKF playing third base this afternoon. Mm -hmm. You're trying to maybe turn him in a little more of that Swiss Army knife utility role. Uh, still the plan to get him some reps in center field this weekend? Get there. Um, yes, he's. Uh, I'm going to play him in um, center field. Uh, what are we today, Wednesday? It's Friday. Friday in Lakeland. Uh, probably going to have him play center. So he'll do some more work out there on, uh, in practice tomorrow, and then uh, we'll, we'll get him out there in the game. And, you know, I, I think it fits his skill set really well, his ability to move around, um, you know, and if we can kind of pair him up with, like, Oswaldo, obviously we've seen Oswaldo, um, you know, play so many positions and do it well. Oswaldo's going to play center field tomorrow. Um, you know, to be able to have those two guys potentially as guys that can move over all over the field, you know, on a game day they're not playing, you know, be a, a guy off the bench, a pinch running option, um, and to be able to plug them a lot of different areas. I think Izzy will fit that role and, and, and could do it, um, but that's what we want to kind of explore it here also to see, you know, what we feel comfortable doing uh, once we get north. Aaron, I'm curious how far the versatility role extends with IKF. We know he has caught yeah. in his career, and Trevino's dealing with the injury, and Higgy's at WBC. You have a couple of other catchers for depth who are down. Any possibility that you would get him a couple of innings behind the plate in spring training? I don't know that I see it necessarily in spring training. Now, even last spring training when obviously he was, you know, our everyday shortstop, it wasn't something that we would ever do unless a super emergency. But we did have him do, you know, just a day behind the scenes back there. Um, so that's something we may do more behind the scenes. I don't know if necessarily with – within a game uh, in spring training, um, you know, but always feel like no matter what, he can be that emergency third catcher for us. Oswaldo Cabrera grabs that one playing second base today. This is something I mentioned to Jack that's kind of interesting to see. IKF at third, Volpe at short, Cabrera at second. The ability to move these players around and feel confident that they can get the job done. Yeah, no question. I do feel like we're more versatile, um, you know, over the last couple of years. We feel like we've we've taken a step in our versatility, and, and certainly Oswaldo's emergence has played a big role in that. Obviously, what DJ is able to do within the infield. Um, so I think in today's game, you know, where you know you only have really four extra players on the bench, you know, the more versatility you can have. Um, I, I think I think the better off you are and, and hopefully hopefully we're developing that a little bit more now. Aaron 15 days until opening day what's still on your to do list of, of things you need to accomplish to have this team ready. Well obviously we want to move keep moving that clock on on some of our guys that need that time from an injury standpoint so hopefully we you know continue to to get better on the injury front as we move closer to opening day um, obviously getting our, our starters continue to build up uh, Seve Seve got over 60 today Garrett 70 last night um, so continuing to obviously build them up um, and then you know our, our our regulars also you know You'll start to see them go deeper in the game, some more back-to-backs now as we're here into these final two weeks. I feel like for the most part, guys have gotten good reps in and gotten enough plate appearances and things like that. But now you want to start pushing a little bit of that volume and, and get them built up for obviously, you know, when they're going to be out there typically nine innings for several days in a row. So you want to start to build that kind of that 
uh, stamina and, and build that workload, um, you know, so they're in a good place when we when we get to March 30th. You know, fans are excited that Volpe and Dabingas have kind of pushed the conversation deeper into spring training. I know you've got a tough decision coming up on those guys and conversations potentially as well, but is that exciting for you as well? It is. It's been a lot of fun to watch some of these young guys that are knocking on the door, some guys that are going to get in there. You know, we saw Oswaldo obviously come up last year and, and Peraza come up at the end, and, and obviously other guys pushing forward now and making a name for themselves and pushing themselves into conversations. It's exciting. We do, we do feel like we have a number of guys that, um, you know, have a chance to, to be impact players and uh, kind of that next wave and, and excited to see what they've done and in a, in a few cases pitched really well, obviously. Throw down by Duran. Really Did they well. get him? Ball got dropped. So yeah. <laughs> Aaron, I think I asked you this the last time we had you on, but I'm going to I'm going to try again. So only a couple of weeks left before opening day. Mm -hmm. When would you like to, as a manager, know? Hey, and let the players know that this is going to be our shortstop. Is it a week before the season? Could, could it drag even a little closer to opening day? You got to keep on asking, Jack. You're just going to have to keep on asking. Uh, no, I don't have a day that, you know, uh, that I want to get it done by. We'll, we'll do, you know, what we think's best and, and make sure we, you know, try and make the best decision possible. And, again, that's, that's, that'll be an ongoing conversation, too, as the year unfolds. So uh, I don't have a plan of when we'll, we'll announce that. Nick but you'll be the first to know. Oh, perfect. Thank you. We'll keep asking. Holding you to that. Thanks, Aaron. All right, guys.